Hi everyone, I'm Elaine Quijano. We want to update you on a story we've been monitoring in Colorado. At least seven people have been injured in a shooting at a school just outside of Denver. Authorities confirm two suspects have been taken into custody. Our CBS station in Denver is reporting that four people have been taken to local hospitals. CBS News has also learned that the FBI is on the scene of the shooting and is assisting local law enforcement. The school is called STEM School Highlands Ranch. It has students from kindergarten through high school. CBS News law enforcement analyst Paul Violas is on the phone with me now. So, Paul, we don't have a lot of details, but uh, what is your sense of what we're seeing unfold right now? You know, Lane, the one thing that, that we understand from our sources on the ground is that there, there possibly could be a third suspect that's still in the school. They don't know that yet. So what law enforcement is going to make sure that they do is all people that are going to be evacuated will be thoroughly searched so they can ensure that the shooter, if there is, if there is, in fact, a third person involved in this, that they're identified and not slip through the cracks. That's, that's the first thing. The second thing is they're going to contain the crime scene. And we don't right now know, Elaine, how many crime scenes there are. What that means for our viewers is that we don't know how many places these shooters attacked inside that school or on the property. So they're going to contain that because what we do know is that they have apprehended two suspects. So they have to look now towards the prosecutorial side. So they have to make sure that all evidence is contained and it's not tainted. And the next part about this is that they're going to have to sequester to witness it. Everybody that's involved is going to have to be brought to a certain location so that investigators will be able to, obviously, given the age of, the, of, of those folks, they're going to have to be able to speak to them with parents present so they can start to identify what they knew, what they didn't know, what they saw, and what they heard. That's what's going on right now. So I'm looking at an Associated Press report uh, that has the latest on this uh, shooting uh, saying that the school is actually located near a sheriff's department substation and that authorities were able to respond quickly. This uh, AP piece also says that students were being bused to a nearby recreational center to reunite with their families. Um, Paul, given the logistics, though, of conducting um, this kind of response and investigation simultaneously, can you give us a sense of the massive undertaking when you talk about a school, for instance, like this, that has students from kindergarten um, uh, up through uh, high school, what is it that is actually involved in terms of manpower, in terms of trying to ensure that every person who may have been a witness is in fact uh, debriefed by authorities? Great question, Elaine. This is something that law enforcement across the country, and specifically in Colorado, I can say, have practiced this and they do this quarterly so that there's an evacuation area and they know this in advance. They know where people go and who's going to bring them and where they have to stay. There's a person that's in charge of communications, meaning how do I communicate with parents? How do I communicate with family? There's a number to call. There's a website to, to contact so that people can be funneled to a certain location so as, A, to expedite re, you know, reunification with, with family, but also not to contaminate any kind of crime scene or not to impede the investigation. That is what's going on right now. This has all been practiced. The biggest thing that we're seeing right now, though, is the fact that, and you mentioned this, they're relocating from one place to another. And this is something that we have seen over the last two years with the advent of so many school shootings that authorities have implemented so as not to impede the investigation, but also to expedite information to parents so they're not standing there, Elaine, waiting to see what's happening, on my, is, is, you know, is my child okay? That's what's happening right now. And so um, what is happening right now? You think in, in the next few hours, what can we expect to see take place? Well, the first thing is that they have to clear the crime scene. That means that they have to make sure, they meaning law enforcement, has to make sure, and that's the sheriff's office or local police department, has to make sure that they clear the entire building, they clear the campus. Clearing means that they can completely confirm that there is not another shooter in the presence uh, on, on, on the property and that the risk has been mitigated. The next part about that is to start to focus where the primary crime scene was, where did the shooter or shooters come in, and where were they shooting? The reason for that is because they need to focus on, was it a class? Was it a group? 
Was it an athletic event? This is going to help authorities as they move forward to ascertain and to more validate what the intent was behind the shooter or the shooters. Meaning, and we've seen this before, Elaine, where the, the shooter or shooter will go to a certain location because they had an ax to grind. There was something that built up within them that created that much resentment that they focused on that. So that's so much important. That, that is why that part of it is so important. Where they were as far as where they gained access. That's going to tell law enforcement if they were students and if they weren't students, and it's going to help expedite if there may, in fact, been other people involved in this. Who they fired at, that's also going to tell them right now if, in fact, this was something that was preplanned you know, in, extensively, or was this something that was a knee-jerk reaction to an event that may have happened in school and it prompted an immediate response. That's what's happening right now from a primary and a secondary perspective. All right, and we are just learning that President Trump has in fact been briefed on this shooting in Colorado. That's according to White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders, who confirmed that to our CBS News White House team. All right, Paul Violas, Paul, thank you very much. Always a pleasure.